The purpose of this video is to discuss the sound out object. You can find the sound out object in the toolbox on the left hand side of eStudio. The sound out object is made to display one sound and only one sound. Unlike some of the other objects in eProime here, the sound out object doesn't have a visual component. It only accesses the sound card on your computer. To add a sound out to your experiment, all you have to do is take it from the toolbox and drag it to wherever you'd like on your experiment. By default, this will be called sound out one. To open its properties, go ahead and double click on it to open it in the workspace. Now, as I mentioned, the sound out object doesn't have any visual properties. So therefore, all you get is a properties page. The first property that you can change is the file name through which you can load a sound file. Now the sound file can either be added by directly hard coding a sound file, so sound1.wave for example. You can have an attribute reference in here, so the stim sound as an attribute reference, or if you would like, you can navigate to a single sound object by clicking on this folder here, and then finding one of our sample sound files or ones that you might have. So we go under samples and go into uh, sound RT. You see we have two sound files in here and they end up looking like this. The buffer size allows you to determine how long the buffer is for this sound object. The buffer mode allows you to either have a buffered sound or a streaming sound. We recommend streaming. Position time format allows you to set either milliseconds, microseconds, or bytes for the time format for the sound object itself. The start and stop offset properties allow you to determine how long the sound object is playing with the stop offset and how long into the sound object you begin playing with the start offset. The loop property lets you to determine whether or not you are looping the sound object and the stop after property allows you to set whether or not the sound object stops playing after the entirety of the duration of the sound out object has been reached. The stop after mode lets you set where the object stops, either at the onset time of the next object in the experimental timeline or the offset time of this object. And the end sound action lets you set whether or not it terminates or jumps or does nothing once the sound is done playing. The two properties on the right are volume control, which allows you to set the volume for this specific sound. Keep in mind that there are other factors that go into the volume of the sound as well, not just this volume control property. And the pan control allows you to set whether or not it is playing through the left or the right speaker or both speakers. The common tab lets you set the name, if there are any specific tags you have, or if you have any notes on this object. As always, there's a generate pre-run and generate post-run property. These let you set whether or not the sound is being loaded at the top of procedure or before object run. We recommend inherit. And the handles conditional exit property lets you set whether or not participants can exit out of the experiment while the sound object is playing. The duration input tab lets you set the duration for the entirety of the object. So how long is the sound object or how long will eProime spend on this sound object? The data logging tab allows you to select what data is logged for this sound out object. The timing mode allows you to set between event, cumulative, and custom. And the pre-release allows you to set whether or not you are going to pre-release in the middle of this object. The input mask allows you to set whether or not you are going to respond to the sound object with a keyboard, a mouse, a button, or whatever other object you happen to have connected to your experiment. And selecting anything will allow you to activate these response options properties. So it allows you to set the allowable response whether or not a response is correct, how long participants have to respond to this object, and what happens once participants make a response. And you also have this jump label property here if participants will be jumping based on response to the sound out object. The task event tab allows you to set whether or not an action will happen based on an event in the sound out object. So for example, whenever the sound starts playing through action time, whenever a response was made through your input mask, or anything like that, it allows you to then set different actions you would like to happen. So would you like some script that you wrote to execute? Would you like to send a signal through Kronos, Parallel Port, Serial Port, or Socket Device? Those can all be set here through the graphical user interface. Sync allows you to determine whether or not we are starting the sound with the vertical blank or not. Since the sound on object doesn't have a visual component, we don't recommend setting any of these properties to anything other than none. The logging tab allows you to determine what data is being logged. So are you logging time audit properties or dependent measures in relation to the sound object? And finally, the experiment advisor report allows you to choose statistics that you want to log for the sound object itself. 
So any onset to onset statistics, any onset delay statistics, and any load time statistics. That concludes all of the properties for the Sound.1 object. Thank you very much for watching.